think I'm gonna go and get a tray. So I've brought you in my kitchen because uh, I've got work in a couple of hours and I need to make a lunch to take with me now. So I've just got myself a really nice little job to do for a Saturday afternoon because it is wet and windy and far too cold outside. So I've come out here because I need to feed the birds but my goodness it is so cold. It's about minus one at the moment and it was minus three last night. Now, I know a lot of areas in the UK have had snow um, this past week. We haven't. We've just had low temperatures. But I wanted to see how the plants were coping and that got me thinking, how do plants actually cope with the cold? Now, it was quite interesting to read up. Apparently what they do is they um, build up amino acids and sugars which they store to protect their cells and it acts like a, an antifreeze. So it lowers the freezing point. So all these plants, my Paddy, it's a good boy. All these plants that are hardy, they're okay. You can see the soil's sort of frosty white, but the plants are okay. They're, they're surviving. I don't want to touch them though. And this is the garlic, the garlic, the red onions. Now we need cold temperatures for the garlic in particular because they need the cold temperatures to split the bulbs, but they are too young at the moment. But there's a few months ahead of cold temperatures. The carrots, they're obviously feeling the cold. You can actually see the tops of the carrots in there. I'm still picking those, they're doing really, really well. Look how pretty that is. It's a sage. And although that's a Mediterranean plant, it's coping well. And then if I come round... Solid ice. I fed the birds. I'll come out in a minute and um, see if I can break that ice up for them so they've got water. So while I'm out here there's something I wanted to show you. Now we actually had rain a couple of nights ago and look at this. I was so excited. It's three quarters filled but it's actually <laughs> it's got an icy surface and there's no ice at the bottom of the drain pipe so there's been no runoff. I'm really, really pleased, but it is bitterly cold, so I won't be doing anything out here today except for one little job I've given myself. Something I should have done weeks and weeks ago. These three buckets have got my main crop potatoes in, the King Edwards. So, um, I think later on today I'll get my wheelbarrow out and we'll empty those and uh, see what's in there. So I'm in the greenhouse. This is my geraniums. They're all under fleece to protect them. Let's see what the temperature is. 1.5. Yeah, so very, very cold. Got the ice on here. It's time for a coffee. See you in a bit. So I'll be honest with you all. <laughs> I'm not sure I should be doing this because it is so blooming cold. But I want to get the job done. I want these buckets moved. And I want to get these potatoes stored. So let's have a look at this first one and see what we've got. Let's 
plenty of worms in here. I think I'm gonna go and get a tray. Now, these were sown very, very late. I think it was the end of July. So I'm not expecting great things. But there's, there is a lot in here by the looks of it. Not so big. Everyone's a bonus. Oh God, hands are so cold. I can't feel my fingers. I cannot feel my fingers, they're hurting now. Oh, I might have to go in and come back out. Oh. Oh. I suffer from Reynolds, I don't know if you say it. And uh, I think if I take my gloves off, my fingers are going to be white. can't do any more. Okay, so I come back out, just thawed out a bit. I found another pair of gloves, so I'm gonna see. I'm just about to get them on under these. Give me extra layers. Oh, it's a bit tricky. Right, let's see if we can get this last bit done. Just make sure there's nothing else in here. There's bound to be something. What I'll do is I'll, I'll sieve it at a later date. So what I'll do with these, I will spread them out on trays and uh, leave them in the shed to cure. And then once the skins have toughened up a bit, then I can store them. touching done so they're in the shed um, I've laid them all out as you just saw so they're not touching so that if any of them um, have got any rot or um, start to go mouldy that it won't spread and I've covered them so they've got no um, light on them to exclude all light so I'll leave them for a couple of weeks for the skins to cure and then I can clean them up I'll brush off all the soil and bag them up but I'm glad I put double gloves on because that really worked a treat so I'm muddy I'm going in guess what I'm going to go and have This is snow, East Anglia style.
So I've brought you in my kitchen because uh, I've got work in a couple of hours and I need to make a lunch to take with me. Now it's been so cold that I thought I'd make a nice um, hearty winter soup made with vegetables from the garden, those that I've got stored and any condiments that I've got in the store cupboard. So I just chuck everything in and blitz it up. So let me show you what I've got for today and I'll show you how I make it. So I've just picked some carrots. They were a bit tricky because some of them were frozen in the container. I've got some potatoes that I um, harvested yesterday. I've got homegrown onion, which I took from the shed and the garlics from the shed. I had a chili. I think that is one of the Apache chilies that was in the fridge. I've got some Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, I've got a vegetable stock cube and in that tub is um, a defrosted pasta base or tomato base that I made um, earlier in the year. So I really like making batches of this throughout the summer months just because it's so versatile and I use it in all my pasta dishes like lasagna or spag bowl. It's perfect as a base for curries and obviously soups. And it's just so full of goodness. There's no sugars and no additives, so you know exactly what goes into it. So I've just taken that one out and defrosted it. So I will add that to my base to give it more depth. And I think I'll actually get a bag of frozen beans out the freezer and add some of those in as well. So all my vegetables are ready now, so I've got some frozen beans from the freezer. Um, I've chopped up the potatoes. Now the potatoes I haven't completely peeled. I've only peeled off any scabby bits, but I've left as much skin on as possible because there's a lot of goodness in the potato skins. I'm going to put that in the pot now with the stock for about 12 minutes and then check and see if everything's tender. Shall bring that to the boil and then let it simmer for 12 minutes and in the meantime all my peelings are going to go in the compost bin all the vegetables are tender now I've let it cool for about five minutes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blitz it. Now, if you want a chunky soup, what I suggest you do is you only take out two thirds of the soup and blitz that and then put it back. But um, on this occasion, because I'm going to be eating it at work out of that pot, I'm gonna blitz the whole lot and make it into a smooth soup. But that's entirely up to you. Now I'm going to add in this tomato base. Bit of a test taste. Oh, that's nice. Right, so I'm going to put some in here and I'm going to box the rest and put it in the fridge. So I've got my vegetable soup for work. I've done a slice of buttered bread and I have some Stilton cheese, so that's a really nice contrast of flavours. And I've got two pots more of the soup, which once it's cooled is gonna go in the fridge and I can have that in the week. So I've just got myself a really nice little job to do for a Saturday afternoon because it is wet and windy and far too cold outside. So on my windowsill in the kitchen, I've had these basil cuttings. Now I cut these off of the main plants four or five weeks ago. They've been sitting in water and they've now got roots on them. 
so I'm going to pop those up and one of my spider plants I accidentally knocked off one of the babies so I put that in water and that's got roots now so I'm going to pop that up as well. So I'm going to continue potting these up and I will see you all in the next one. I'm Annie and this is my kitchen garden.